Okay, this cook is going to be a uh, low and slow brisket. What we've got here is a a whole packer. It's got the flat and the point meat on it. You can see this seam here. That's where the separation is. This one's about nine pounds. I've already trimmed it down and took off all but about a quarter inch of the fat on the top. You gotta watch this one close because it's a real hard cook. It's all of three ingredients. A lot of people get crazy with them and do all kinds of nuts stuff with it. But we're gonna do three ingredients. We're gonna marinate it in Moore's marinade overnight. We're gonna rub it down with steak dust, dirty steak dust. You can get it at Sam's Club. And we're gonna put a little bit of wolf rub bold on it. We're gonna throw it on the cooker at 250 and let it go and it'll take about six to nine hours. Just let it go low and slow. That's all there is to it. So get it in a two gallon bag with a bottle of Moore's marinade and let it sit overnight. All right, there it is, it's in a two gallon bag. It's got about a bottle and a half of Moore's in it, maybe a little more, just barely fit in there. But uh, as you can see, the marinade's not quite over the top of it, but just let it sit in the fridge overnight, at least 12 hours, 24 hours preferably. You gotta flip it a few times so that the marinade gets incorporated on both sides, and then uh, it'll be ready to rub down and put on the grill. Okay, here's the brisket after it's been in the marinade all night. It's been flipped once so that both sides are exposed good to the marinade. Now it's ready for the first coat of uh, spices or rub. We're going to use some turkey steak dust for the base. Just get you a good even coat. I mean, where you can't see the meat all over it. I've done this countless times, so I'm telling you it works. You can deviate if you want to, but if this is your first time around, I can almost guarantee it's going to work as long as you cook it properly. As you can see, I'm just covering the meat slightly where you can't see it. Get a good light coat on there like that. And basically leave it alone. I'm also going to add some wolf rub to the top of that. This is a buddy of mine on the, on the web that I order some stuff from. Got lots of good seasoning. This is his own stuff. He makes a bold and a regular wolf rub. It's really good. Plus he sells all kinds of other stuff, Primo grills, smoking pellets, I just bought a load of those from him to try those out. Uh, thermometers, all kinds of good stuff at wolfrub.com. So, give him a try. Just same thing here, we don't want to go as heavy with the wolf rub, but just to give it a nice, nice dose as well and it'll work with the steak dust. Form a good crust on here. I don't worry too much about a smoke ring. Some people do. I don't. I don't seem to have too much luck getting one in, in my Primo, especially with a water bath in there, which I always use. It seems to keep the, the briskets and the pork butts moister. Stabilizes the temperature. So there's a good coat there. Pat it in now. And we're going to let it sit like this until the cooker's ready. It's already been lit. Got some hickory and some cherry in there. With the D plates in place for indirect. I'll throw a big uh, hotel pan on top of that throwaway kind with the remainder of the marinade and some water in it to uh, humidify the chamber once it gets going. I think just for grins, I'm going to add some of this rub I made last night for the chicken we had. And uh, it's, it's just a mixture of chili powders and, and uh, coriander and cumin and salt, a little brown sugar. You know, 
few things like that and just add it for a third base. I said three ingredients. If you count the marinade, this would be four. Of course, it's up to you. I've done it with just the steak dust and they turn out tremendous. So that's what you want to do. That's definitely I want a con or want an eighth place contest spot using just the steak dust and the boars. So if that tells you anything, that's a good recipe. So it's up to you. You let this sit and it will soak in and, and get wet from the meat uh, juices. By the time your fire is ready to go, I'm gonna bring it up to about 275 or so, maybe a little higher. Uh, that's higher than the target temp of, of 250, but when you throw all the water pan and the, the meat in there, it's gonna suck that temperature right back down. So you want to get it up a little bit higher so it can recover quicker. So we'll leave it here for now. The next next time I see you, we'll be out at the grill load this thing up and I've got this on this pan fat side down. We're putting the uh, seasoning on the bottom of the brisket right now. Alright as you can see I've got the D plates in there, smoking woods in, put my water pan in. It's got a little bit of the marinade in it and a gallon of water. We'll put our uh, cooking grates on and get the right. You can see the brisket over here. We got the rest of our rub and stuff that we're going to put on once we flip it on to the grill here. So uh, let's get it on. Pick it up off the pan. Pack your rub in there one last time. Maybe rub it in a little bit. Kind of get it sticking. Take it on. Lay it on the grill. Over your water pan, good. Now we got to dust it with the steak dust. Like on the inside, you get a good coat on here. fan that will regulate the temperature in this cooker to 3 degrees. So that's coming next. Alright, as you can see, brisket's looking pretty good. It just The uh, alarm just went off so it's time to pull it off, take it inside and uh, wrap it up. We've got some eggplant going here that will finish up probably 30 minutes or so. And uh, got some hot uh, mustard potato salad going so it's going to be a good meal. That's one gorgeous piece of meat. That's going to be some awesome eating right there. <laughs> 